Welcome to the Catholic Commission for Social Justice and the Archdiocese Ministry for Migrants and Refugees, second episode of our series, Ask Why. And ask why what? Ask why there is need for social justice, why there are inequities and inequalities within our society. Ask why we need to come together as community, because as Pope Francis rightly says, we are all interconnected. And today I'm very excited to have a, a very substantial and dare I say it, wise organization before me. Um, Trinidad and Tobago's retired um, Association of Retired Persons, top, and their wonderful executive, may I welcome Ms. Mailing Young Lao. Thank you for joining us, Mailing, and Mr. Kern Williams. Thank you for joining us, Kern. And today's episode, we are discussing integral human development, which is a fundamental aspect of social justice. And, I, and I'm sure most of you at home are asking, well, what is integral human development? So let me take a moment to briefly define it. Integral human development is a human-centered development perspective that holds that authentic development is the development that makes every person more human and seeks to promote the good of the whole person and every person. In his encyclical letter, Popolorum Progressio in 1967, the Holy Father, Pope Paul VI, explains what he intends for integral human development. In God's plan, every man is born to seek fulfillment, for every human life is called some task by God. At birth, a human being possesses certain aptitudes and abilities in germinal form. And these qualities are to be cultivated so that they may bear fruit. By developing these traits through formal education or personal effort, the individual works his way towards the goals set for him by the creator. Endowed with intellect and free will, each man is responsible for his self-fulfillment even as he is for his salvation. He is helped and sometimes hindered by his teachers and those around him. Yet whatever be the outside influences exerted on him, he is the chief architect of his own success or failure. Utilizing only his talent and willpower, each man can grow in, huma in humanity, enhance his personal worth and perfect himself. And I thought, wow, we have to get top on board to speak to this very issue. Because, you know, it, it, you know, uh, Mailing and I were speaking off air, and it, it is the reality that we get to a certain age and stage in life when life becomes more, you, you question what your, what your purpose is. You know, when we're younger, we tend to have this motivation to be successful, to move up the career ladder. And as we get to older, to these older stages in our lives, we recognize that through wisdom and experience that life is much more, that we as people are much more. And I'm really thankful, Mei Ling, to have you on the show. Kern, thank you also for joining us today. Because as we spoke off air, there's so much wisdom to be shared from the top community and to the wider audience about our life and the purpose of the whole human person. So welcome and let's get kicked off. Thank you, thank you very much. That is so true what you just said. And it's such a pity that, you know, we, we realize this not when we are young, but when we are older. Can you imagine if we had that wisdom when we are 20 and 22, how much more a more superhuman beings we would be, more embracing, it would be fabulous. But nevertheless, we will still get there as human beings. We will still get there. I love that. I yeah. agree. Kern, thank you for coming on the show with us today. You know, this idea of um, developing the whole person. And can I say, Kern, you do not look 50 plus. <laughs> But he is. Oh, well, I am. He is. He wow, is. congratulations. I'm super impressed by that. So, so, 
I, I, I mean, just, just for um, uh, another perspective, you know, working with TARP and learning from this very large community of people, you know, how do you feel that um, life changed at 50 plus for you? I don't know if it has changed as such, but there's a progression. You just get wiser, honestly. You get wiser with age and things that you would have worried about before, it is of absolutely no importance. And being, since we've been with TARP, you meet so many different people from different walks of life, from different parts of society that you realize there's one common goal. That one common goal is we have all attained the age 50. We're not looking at religion. We're not looking at education. We are not looking at society, money, anything like that. We see only age 50 plus people, only age 50. And we learn from each other, what each other's experiences and what is, uh, each other's knowledge, we learn from it and we move forward. And I suppose that's one of the successes of TARP. It makes us stronger. I know from my point of view, it has made me stronger. As a younger person, if I go to the bank or if I go anywhere else, you know, I'm always looking, I need to move on. Why is this person talking? You know, um, I have learned to stop and listen. Listen, because that person would have something to say, something that we could learn from. Or listening to the members in Faisabad or Shabwanas and their perspective on any topic, on anything, is always so different from head office that you have to stop and see how we could embrace it for all. And I think we need to start with us, each one of us. We need to start with our thinking. We need to know we all need to breathe. We all need our heart to pump the blood. We are all the same. So all the money and all the education and all the jobs, whatever you have, is secondary. And we need to meet each other at a level, human beings facing each other. Well, uh, Mailing, you just completed the whole show for us there. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the reality is you just exactly spoke to the fact that what Pope Francis has been saying for the longest while, we are all interconnected. We are so much more than the jobs we have, the our race, our religion. Yeah. Uh, the, the reality is we now need to come together in community and a human community. Exactly. Yeah. Embrace everyone. Embrace all. Um, top members, not to, if you're living in the biggest house or you're living in the smallest house, we see you. You are a top member. We embrace you. Um, and we accept it. And I'm very, very proud that we have been able to do it. The young people in the office, like Kern and the, the staff here, they are the ones that are teaching me so much more. They are teaching me this, you know? And, you know, a lot of people said, there's no future for the young, the young people, everything with the young people. But I will argue that point from our seven or eight members of staff that we have here. They have the patience of Job and the understanding you know, and they will do it with not a frown on their face. And yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And by the time kneeling get there, listen, listen, and they will pull me aside. So, you know, we need the young to bring us, you know, up to date on things. Yes, society has all kind of new technology. Yes, and we are not into it. The younger ones are into it. So we need to bridge that. We give them our patience and understanding. They give us the technology and the way to move forward with technology. Nothing is wrong with technology, you know, nothing is wrong, but we need, how are we connecting the two with a human aspect, the human aspect. And as we were talking offline that we both have our little Chinese, our little Oriental background. This is one of the things I always admire the Chinese for. You see how they bow when they meet each other and they respect their elders, they respect each other. 
You don't know if they have two doctorates. You don't know who they are. But as soon as they see you, they bow. And I said, oh my God, if only we could start respecting each other. And it has to start with us. I... If we respect each other, we win, you know. We win the story. We win. I totally agree. And it, it speaks to exactly what Jesus has already said. You know, love your neighbors, you love yourself. And we now need to live that. We and need to live it. Yes. We need to live it. And I'm not saying we go to the extreme. We know we will have neighbors who are, you know, less than friendly. But if you keep telling them good morning every morning, you know, and you pass and you say, oh, did you get water last night? Or here's an avocado. They may not, they may not take it today. They may not take it next week. But gradually they will see you are not a threat and you don't think you are better than they are. But it has to start with us. We can't expect to start to tell the younger ones, this is what to do. Um, you need to do this if we are not doing it. We need to lead by example what we do and how we do it. And seeing that we have reached this age, we don't have to hustle eight o'clock in the traffic. Let us have the patience and the understanding with each person we will win. I, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is the, the key aspect of the TARP membership. Your, your organization, which is 40,000 strong, um, is specifically designed for persons who are retired. So when you have left the, the, the humdrum or the, the intensity of the nine to five or eight to four workplace, you somehow life does change. Your time becomes your own again. So can you speak to how this would shift your perspective of you know, who you are in the world? Because as, as we've said, you know, top membership is open to people who are 50 plus. Now, most people retire in their 60s, but you, know, you tend to start slowing down around, around 50 plus and it frees you up to live on a deeper level. What does that look like? Oh, it's fabulous, a fabulous time of life. Um, the 50 year olds will not want to hear that they, they're slowing down because they think they, they're moving on because the 50 year old today is like a 25 year old yesterday, you know? So we are still vibrant at 50. We still want to do things, but it gives us an opportunity to put things in place, to make sure we see things differently. And when we retire, it's like a load is lifted off. You see that getting up on a morning and, and, and facing the traffic two hours, an hour, you know, to come into Port of Spain. And, and it's in some of the workplaces, you might have a hostile environment where they're not accepting the age person so much again. You know, these are the things that we need to change. Um, but it's a whole lifting, a whole lifting of the whole perspective. We can still do things. In top our top members, they do a lot. It is a wealth of knowledge in this base of people, you know, who have retired. A base a, that we can tap into for so many things, you know. We, we want to go and talk to our plants. Suddenly we have time to talk to our plants. A lot of them decide to redecorate their house. Although, you know, financially it's better to do it before you retire than to do it when you retire retire but it is a time when you could redecorate or travel they love to travel they love to meet each other and they meet uh they do exercises dance classes we have top members who are playing pan who is learning spanish you know they're doing things that they, they did not have the time to do but they're doing it and believe you me they're the most fashionable people you will ever come across they love their fashion they love their fashion and they love themselves. I mean, who else to love us but us, right? And if by loving us, we could love you, it's a win. It's a win-win all the way. It's a win. No, I love that. And especially because at that, um, at, at that age, as you rightly said, what you've described is a rich life. And you know, that, that's, the, that's the irony of the situation. We spend so long, you know, it's working, slaving away to get wealth, 
And it's only when we leave that aspect that we discover richness. And I, and you know, between you and me, I, I think that is the, the key aspect of integral human development, finding the richness within the person as God intended you to be. Because as um, Pope, um, Pope John VI rightly said, you know, we're born with these seeds of creativity and we're supposed to become this human being that God wishes us to be. And what you're describing there is, um, it's almost at this stage that we blossom, we blossom into our fullness. Another key point that I have noticed, and I'm taking from my point of view as a human being, a person, and then listening to top members, is we learn to listen. Because what I have experienced is talking to someone when they're not listening, they're not hearing you. So you just listen. We have learned to listen. And that also improves our life. Because when you're trying to tell somebody this is yellow, when they see in blue, they still have the blue in their mind, and you are going with the yellow, and they get annoyed, or you get annoyed, because that transition is not getting there. It's not getting there. So you just learn to listen. And if that person insists it's yellow, he says, OK, and you leave that yellow because you will find another day to come back and say, hello, you see this, it's yellow. And they are ready to listen. And they'll say, oh, you know, I didn't see it all the time, it was yellow. I'm now seeing it, you're right, you know, but we need to give people time to hear themselves, time to really see what they're seeing. Because we're trying to tell them, they still will not see what you are telling them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ready. Sorry, sorry. Let me listen. <laughs> you know, no. I talk a little bit too much sometimes. No, um, no but... you don't. This is this uh, this is why I knew we had to have top on the show because the the richness of the experience of of people who are I mean this is your half a century is is a wealth of life experience to be shared and as as we've you know it i think it's important at this point to ask if you had a magic wand and could shift society because arguably we're in a time where you know pope francis says that we treat the world and each other as a throwaway culture Everything is easily disposed of. We don't appreciate. And we see it in our own worlds. And, you know, we've seen it, that progression happen very quickly. Look at, for example, the crisis of climate change, which we are, which we are now facing. Yes, exactly. when, when you were younger, you know, I'm sure this was not so much an issue or, um, or even top of mind for, for you when you were arguably you know, um, my age, um, not that, that I'm that young, <laughs> but I say if I had a magic wand and I had to look back, say when I was younger, I would wave the wand to respect, respect because as a girl, you had respect for your neighbor, you recognize your neighbor and you know, you had respect the policemen, your teachers and elderly you had respect. And I think once we recognize people and we know and give them that respect, I, that is a stepping stone for us to start. It's all well and good for us to be where we are today, you know. It's okay because we cannot expect life to stop, you know, 20 years, 30 years ago. But what is lost is we have lost the need or the, the right to respect each other, to see each other. We need to see each other. And we need to teach our children that because you, you have the little ones and you just have the little ones going and they would pass somebody straight. Good morning. Nobody says good morning and nobody says good thank you anymore. We need to go back to that. And I think if we go back to that simple little thing, that respect, it will get into our subconscious. Yes, this is somebody that I need to see, that I need to hear. I need to listen. 
and we could move from there. It's a stepping stone. I think that's actually ex ex so eloquent and excellent because it, it literally speaks to, a, once again, integral human development. We need to see the humanity and the uniqueness and the preciousness of each and every person in this world. So, you know, if, a, you know, just to kind of, if you had one message that you could give our leaders in society right now, and I'm meaning I'm going to ask you, but then turn, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to challenge you here too. So but I'm going to go to mailing first to give you a minute to really think about it. Um, our leaders who, who have that ability and, you know, top can speak be, um, to our leaders because you are an organization, a key aspect of civil society. And as I've said, you are 40,000 persons strong. What would you say to our leaders? Because we we are social justice. And I think that's important to, to put forward. If we are going to change society, we need to have structural change. So what would you say to our leaders who are moving us forward? When we say leaders, we mean anybody in society who has authority on anything, be it from the banking, politics, and wherever, insurance, you name it. Yes lead by example i would say lead by example because what you put portray in public is what we see and it would either annoy us or we would accept it but if you lead by example you show by example regardless of what you're feeling respect me and lead by example excellent thank you mailing turn Thank you again for having us and having me. Um, basically, what I look at is sometimes you have to put yourself in the next person's shoes as leaders. Sometimes when we, we are leaders, sometimes we think we are we are above or we are we are more or we are higher in society than others. But sometimes even the garbage collector has a very, very important role very much so. in society compared to what you, you will lead in the government or you will lead in the organization. That is an important role as well. But even the garbage collector or even the need for the cleaner has a very important role. And sometimes we as leaders have to step out of our shoes and put ourselves in a next person's shoes to really understand that's what we, I think that's what we really need to um, look at. And then we will definitely, we will, we will have a more humane interaction and more mm -hmm. society, mm -hmm. more respect as meaning as mentioned, you know what I mean, to, to interact with each other. I think that is a brilliant answer. And once again, bringing it right back to that idea of integral human development. Exactly. You know, okay. we have this is, we, we have this saying in Trinidad, well, he or she feels she reach. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a cultural thing. Well, I don't know if they say it's a cultural thing, but it's a cultural thing. We, we always want to step on each other's too. And I don't understand why. We always want to be better than somebody else. And as I said earlier, each and every human being in the world, we need to breathe. And COVID will tell you this. We need to breathe because but not breathing, we die. And each and every one of us in the world, our heart needs to pump and clean and move that blood or we die. Each and every one of us have to have bowel movements. Let's start on that basis. We are all the same. We are all, each one of us. That is totally powerful and I think you know, we're running out of time. And I just want to say thank you. That, that there is so much wisdom to be had from the top community and exactly what you both have said. We need to come back to a place of our deeper humanity to see ourselves as equals, all created by the same God. Definitely. So Definitely. once again, mailing, turn, 
thank you for joining us on the show. You know, I, I always love working with, with TARP and your executive and your, your team. You know, you are an organization that genuinely cares about your membership. You know, and I, I, I think it's important to say that. So we have, you, family. We have family. It it is a thriving community. Yes, it is. It and is. in this world, this is what we need to do. We, we need to recognize our humanity and come together as a healthy community. So mailing turn. Thank, thank you for joining. You. Thank you for thank hearing you. us. Thank you. We're here with Ask Why and why not? ask our experts and we're here to ask Leela Ramdeen, the chair of the CCSJ. Leela, what is integral human development? Thank you, Dominique. This is an important question, but I, I want to locate the concept of integral human development within social justice principles. The Catholic Church proclaims that human life is sacred and the dignity of the human person is the foundation of a moral vision for society. This belief is the foundation of all the principles of our social doctrine. In our society and in our world, human life as we know is under daily attack. And our task is to promote and protect God's creation. The human person as we know is the clearest reflection of God among us. And the human person is the greatest asset in any society. I always tell people, God does not make rubbish. If each of us is made in his image and likeness, this has implications for how we view and treat his creation. Without a transcendent vision of the human person, without the vital, vital link to God, there can be no true human development. Indeed, there can be no peace. Pope Paul VI, in his encyclical Popular and Progressio on the Development of Peoples in 1967, made a profound statement. He said, development is the new name for peace. By it, he meant development of the whole person, uh, of all persons and of every dimension of the person, your physical, material, intellectual, moral, spiritual development. And all persons mean the entire human race, including everyone, regardless of your class, creed, color, um, community or country. He said development cannot be limited to mere economic growth. In order to be authentic, it must be complete. Integral, that is, that it has to promote the good of every person and of the whole person. As Catholics, we must work with others to promote integral human development, authentic integral human development. We do not journey alone. We live in a country and in a world that is multi-religious. In the 1967 encyclical Soci Sol Solicitudo Socialis, Pope St. John Paul II, yes, John Paul II stated, in, in this pursuit of integral human development, he said, we can also do much with the members of other religions. Collaboration in the development of the whole person and of every human being is in fact a duty of all towards all and must be shared by the four parts of the world, East, West, North, and South. Pope Benedict XVI stated, Peace cannot be a mere word or vain aspiration. Peace is a commitment and a manner of life which demands that the legitimate aspirations of all should be satisfied, such as access to food, water, energy, to medicine and technology, or indeed the monitoring of climate change. Only in this way can we build the future of humanity. Only in this way can we facilitate an integral development valid for today and tomorrow. On the 7th of July, 2009, Pope Benedict XVI issued his third and last encyclical, Caritatis in Veritate, Charity in Truth. And this was his second, his first social encyclical. The encyclical is concerned with the problems of global development and towards uh, progress towards the common good. A central theme in his encyclical, Charity in Truth, is the concept of authentic integral human development, which as the Holy Father said, means the development of the whole person, as I said, in all his or her dimensions and of every person. And you can see that he was drawing on Pope Paul VI encyclical, um, Popular Progressio. He says, development is part and parcel of evangelization because Jesus Christ, who loves us, is concerned with the whole person. The pursuit of authentic development, the Holy Father said, requires a transcendent vision of the person. It needs God. That is, we must see humans in relationship with God. 
We need to remember that people are at the center of development and that we do not journey alone. We cannot think about our own development without reaching out in solidarity to promote the development of others. He continues by reminding us that the whole church in all her being and acting, when she proclaims, when she celebrates, when she performs acts of works of charity is engaged in promoting integral human development. Integral human development therefore underpins all that we do as church. It places the human person in all his or her various dimensions who is made to be loved and to love God and others at the center of development of our communities and our world. In 1963, Pope St. John XXIII published an encyclical, Pacem in Terrace, Peace on Earth. Uh, and that encyclical was focusing on establishing universal peace in truth, justice, charity, and liberty. He told us that nations are the architects of their own development and they must bear the burden of this work but they cannot accomplish it if they live in isolation from others. Regional mutual aid agreements among poorer nations, broader based programs of support for these nations, major alliances between nations to coordinate these activities. These are the road signs that point the way to national development and world peace. To promote integral human development, we must also consider our duty, not only to all of humanity, but to the environment also. And remember, we are in the season of creation, 1st of September to the 4th of October. There can be no human development if we do not act to protect our planet now. Pope Francis's words in Laudato Si should spur us to action as we recognize that everything is interconnected. We need to embrace the concept of integral ecology. He has said, we are losing our attitude of wonder, of contemplation, of listening to creation, and thus we no longer manage to interpret within it what Benedict XVI calls the rhythm of the love story between God and man. In one of his peace messages, Pope Benedict XVI referred to his encyclical Charity in Truth, and he said, I noted that integral human development is closely linked to the obligations which flow from man's relationship with his natural environment. And as we know, our Arch Archbishop Jason has asked CCSJ to update the draft framework we had um, to put so that he could go out for consultation with it and we'll develop our, our own Archdiocese policy on the environment. The Catholic Relief Services tell us that integral human development also refers to the process by which a person achieves this well being and common good. True integral development is a long term dynamic process based on human dignity and right relationships. That is each person's relations with God, with self, with others, and with creation. Advancing integral human development means working with a variety of actors to transform the way that society live, not only how they live, but heal and structure their relationships. Progress towards integral human development is achieved through active engagement with others in a just and peaceful society that respects the sacredness of life and the dignity of every person, end of quote. If we are to promote integral human development, we must take action to ensure that we engage in works of mercy and works of social action. This involves not only charitable works, but mean, it means we must work to dismantle unjust structures, systems, institutions that stand as obstacles to integral human development and the development of the common good. Catholic Relief Services tell us that systems and structure systems organize and regulate behavior and processes. Examples of such systems are legal system, the market systems, political systems, social and cultural systems, such as caste, gender, age, cultural group and tradition. Religious beliefs and values, structured or, uh, organizations um, and institutions that shape and influence people's behavior and values or tangible things that affect what they can do and how they do it. Some of these examples are government ministries, churches, mosques, and other religious institutions, schools, hospitals, and other social services, civil society organizations and NGOs, private sector, shops and commercial enterprises. People with power can control structures and systems. They can decide who can have access to services and assets, who gets important information and who does not, who participates in decision-making and who does not people, groups, or communities with a lot of assets, whether it's physical, financial, social, or political, are often the ones who have power. They can influence the systems and structures around them. 
identifying the relationship between assets and systems and structures is very important when it comes to understanding issues of poverty, human dignity, and social justice that will form the foundation of a, of a good program design. Systems and structures can sometimes enable or empower households and communities to achieve integral human development. Other times, they can be, they can be of a more, more of a constraint. The integral human development concept also considers broader aspects of people's lives, including their hopes and aspirations and issues of human dignity and social justice. This conceptual framework leads us to ask, to what extent are people achieving integral human development in their lives? What are people currently doing uh, to make a living? What policies, institutions, and values support a constrained people's ability to earn a living or to lead full productive lives with peace, dignity, and social justice? What shocks or cycles or trends support or threaten people's livelihoods, equity, and human dignity? What are people's strengths and opportunities? What can they do to improve their livelihood outcomes? This integral human development conceptual framework, um, Catholic Relief Services tell us, can help us identify constraints and opportunities for livelihoods. It can help us to choose appropriate human uh, in interventions that strengthen household and community assets and increase human dignity and, and social justice can be uh, um, Im impacted by this conceptual framework. It can help decrease risk and vulnerability and improve lives uh, of, of individuals. I want to share with you Pope Francis's beautiful catechesis on what it means to be human. And Pope Francis drew connections between Paul VI's encyclical and his own encyclical, Laudato Si, on, on our common home, care for our common home. He highlighted many of, the, of um, his pontificate's most powerful themes, such as his displeasure with the disposability of people in a throwaway society, as well as his desire to bring together disparate elements of the human condition. Human life, he said, is like an orchestra. That sounds good if the different instruments are in accord and follow a score shared by all. The organization Catholic Ecology states that his address on that day is a wonderful little mini manifesto. What does full or integral development mean? That is the development of each person and the whole person today and in the near future. In the wake of Paul VI, um, the word, the verb to integrate, he says, is very dear to him. This is Pope Francis. He says it means integrating the different peoples of the earth. The duty of solidarity requires us to seek fair ways of sharing so that there is no longer that dramatic inequality between those who have too much and those who have nothing, between those who's, who discard and those who are discarded. Only the part of integration between peoples can permit to humanity a future of peace and hope. It means offering viable models of social integration. Everyone has a contribution to make to the whole of society. Everyone has a special feature that can be useful to enable us to live together. And no one is excluded from contributing something for the good of all. This is both a right and a duty. And the principle of subsidiarity guarantees the need for the contribution of everyone, both as individuals and as groups. If we want to create a human society open to all, it also means integration and development of all those elements of which it is truly constituted. The different systems, the economy, finance, labor, culture, family life, and religion are each in its own way essential components of this growth, he says. None of them can be rendered absolute and none of them can be excluded from the concept of integral human development, which takes into account that human life, as he says, is like an orchestra that sounds good if the different instruments are in accord and follow a score sheet shared by all. In addition, it means integrating individual and community dimensions. It is true that we are children of a culture, at least in the Western world, which has exalted the individual to the point of turning it into an island as if one can be happy alone. On the other hand, their ideological views and political powers that have crushed the person, that have standardized it and deprived it of that freedom without man no longer, without which man no longer feels human. 
This standardization is also due to economic powers that wish to take advantage of globalization instead of encouraging greater sharing among men and women simply to impose a global market of which they themselves set the rules and reap the profits. The self and the community are not in competition with each other, but the self can mature only in the, in the presence of authentic relationships and the community is generative when its members are together and individually. This is even more applicable to the family, which is the first cell of society and where we learn to live together. Finally, he says it means integrating body and soul. Paul VI, for Paul VI wrote that development cannot be reduced merely to economic growth. Development does not consist in having more and more goods, enabling us a solely material well being. Integrating body and soul also means that no development work can really achieve its purpose if it does not respect the place where God is present to us and speaks to our hearts. God, he says, has made himself fully known in Jesus Christ. In him, God and man are not divided and separated. God became man of human life, both personal and social, a concrete path to salvation. So the manifestation of God in Christ, including his acts of healing, liberation and reconciliation that today we are called to offer in turn to the many injured who lie by the roadside shows the way and the form of service that the church intends to offer to the world. In this light, it is possible to understand what integral development means, a development that harms neither God nor man, since it takes on the consistency of both. In this sense, the very concept of person born and matured in Christianity helps in the pursuit of a fully human development because person means relation, not individualism. It affirms inclusion, not exclusion, unique and inviolable dignity rather than exploitation, freedom, not coercion. The church never tires of offering the wisdom and her work in the world in the knowledge that integral development is the road of good and that human family is called to travel, end of quote. And I wanna end with the words of the organization Social Spirituality. We say, development is for people. We are made by God out of love and called to develop our God-given gifts, to grow as persons and to seek our fulfillment. Development is communal as well as personal. Our personal development takes place within the con context of the development of our communities. We help each other to grow and develop for the good of all. A just society, I always say, is inclusive. Catholic social teaching promotes integral human development for every person, every community, all peoples around our globe. And as Pope Benedict XVI said in Charity in Truth, knowing that we are persons and communities as part of God's family gives us a vision and energy to serve a truly integral human development. And in 2020, in the encyclical of Pope Francis Fratelli Tutti on fraternity and social friendship, he said he shares his view of how we can build a better, more just and peaceful world with the contribution of all people and institutions with an emphatic confirmation of a no to war and to globalize indifference. We cannot be indifferent to the global inequalities and inequities in our world because we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. In the second chapter of Fratelli Tutti, A Stranger on the Road, Pope Francis emphasizes that in, in an un, unhealthy society that turns its back on suffering and that is illiterate in caring for the frail and vulnerable, we are all called, just like the Good Samaritan, to become neighbors to others, overcoming prejudices, personal interests, historic and cultural barriers. We all, in fact, are co-responsible in creating a society that is also that is able to include, integrate, and lift up those who are fallen or, or are suffering. Love, he says, builds bridges, and we are made for love. My message to viewers today is that we embrace the concept of integral human development, and that we act to promote this concept in our daily lives, recognizing that we must celebrate small gestures. We are people of hope. As Pope Francis has said, 
we know that things can change. So may God bless all our efforts as we labor in his vineyard. Thank you. Thank you, Leela. And this is why we have to have this new segment on Ask Why. Ask Leela. Leela, Leela, you are a wealth of information. Thank you for being with us here today. And um, speaking of community, we invite, we, we extend the invitation to the Catholic community and the, the wider community. We, as Leela rightly said, it is season of creation. And we are doing a pilgrimage up to Mount St. Benedict to celebrate that the reality that we are all one, we are all interconnected and we should live in harmony with God's good creation, a home for all. So join us on September the 24th for our Republic Day event. Um, time is 1 to 4 p.m. Sit Mount St. Benedict Car Park. Register now. Spaces are limited. We have strict COVID protocol in effect. And once again, thank you for tuning in into for Ask Why and see us next week. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye.